All right, we're going to go ahead and get started here with our with our webinar today. So uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, uh, whoever is joining us today uh, for the Trimble Catalyst DA2 webinar. My name is Joe Madai. I am a GPS GIS application specialist for Siler Instrument. I am based out of the St. Louis office. Um, and uh, today we're going to talk about the, the Trimble Catalyst DA2 webinar. Uh, just a little housekeeping rules. Uh, you do have a chat function that's in there. Uh, if you want to chat uh, or ask questions, uh, you, can, you can run some questions uh, through there. Um, and I am joined today by, by our co-hosts, and I will let them introduce themselves. Uh, so guys, go ahead and take it away. Welcome, Hello, everyone. <laughs> go ahead, Andy. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Andy Klein. I'm a GPS uh, GIS application specialist here at Siler, and I work out of the Wixom MI office. And I'm Jay Reister, senior GPS GIS application specialist. I'm based out of our Franklin, Wisconsin, Milwaukee office. All right. So thanks, guys, for, for helping me out with this. Jay and Andy are going to uh, answer some questions and kind of help me with with the back end stuff. So they're they're here to help me out and uh, make sure this moves along smoothly uh, as well. So uh, a little bit of background about us is we work for Silo Geospatial. We are a the authorized uh, Trimble dealer uh, in the Midwest. So we operate out of um, out of, uh, what is it, eight states now. Um, and we do uh, mapping and GIS. We also have a survey division and we do all kinds of uh, uh, Trimble stuff out of our, out of our offices uh, here. Um, so today's topics um, are I'm gonna include uh, talking about the equipment, talking about the subscriptions, uh, the software, and then also you're gonna get uh, hands-on experiences from, from Jay, Andy, and I uh, about our, our, our first impressions with the Catalyst DA2 receiver. Um, first off, we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and, and run a poll here uh, just to get a, get a little feedback. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and launch this first question. And the first question is, what current GNSS hardware are, are you using? We got a lot of answers coming through here too. All right, so that, that cool. Everybody's answered. Excellent. Thanks, guys uh, and and gals. Uh, so go, we're going to go ahead and end the results and share the poll here. Um, majority of you are using R twos and and or looking to purchase. We. Uh, so we have a few out there that are using the the the, the DA1 antenna. Um, so that's great. Thanks for 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 stopping by, and uh, we'll do a comparison between the the Catalyst DA1 and the DA2 antenna uh, as well. So I'm going to stop sharing. Okay, we're going to close close that out. And so what uh, what is Trimble Catalyst? Uh, Trimble Catalyst is a software defined GNSS receiver. So what happens when I talk about a software defined receiver? Uh, it is actually driven by a subscription uh, per your accuracy levels to have that accuracy requirement while you are out in the field. So if, if you needed submeter accuracy, we can get you submeter accuracy. We'll talk about the accuracy requirements a little bit later, um, but Trimble Mobile Manager is going to be the driving force for the Trimble Catalyst uh, to then get your accuracy requirements in the field. So what this is gonna do is, is it's going to allow customers to purchase a DA2 receiver and allow them to subscribe to the Catalyst service uh, via the subscription. So you can purchase this Catalyst and if you only work for six months out of the year, you can have six months of, uh, of, of subscription. And then during those other six months when you're not working, uh, you can have that sitting on, sitting on the, the shelf um, and you don't actually have to have a subscription uh, for, for the needs of the, the antenna itself. And this makes this real intriguing uh, because it is, a, um, it is a low cost entry solution, but it is a very powerful tool uh, for, to go out there and, and collect data in the field. So 
when you're out there uh, with using the Trimble Catalyst, it's going to consist of, uh, of four things. You're going to need the DA2 receiver, a power bank of your choice. Um, so you can use any of those power banks that, that uh, you might have to charge your phone. You can use those, uh, Android or iOS, and your application. Uh, you set that up inside of Trimble Mobile Manager and you, you get that information um, you get that information sent uh, directly to, to your phone so you can go out there and collect data very quickly and very efficiently. So let's talk about the differences between the DA1 and the DA2. So talking strictly about the DA1, it was Android only, highly versatile, lightweight, uses the Catalyst, Catalyst positioning services and was considered an antenna. Um, when I when I say it was a, an antenna, it was much like a like a Zephyr antenna that hooked up to a geo, where your phone was actually the receiver, but the catalyst itself was was just an antenna that hooked up to your Android phone. So, in comparison with the DA2, um, I've highlighted uh, and made bold the differences between the DA1 and the DA2. So, the big one of the big differences now is you're getting Bluetooth delivery. So this hooks up just like an R1, an R2, an R10, or an R12 will. You'll just Bluetooth to Android or iOS, and you, you go out there and you start collecting data with using Trimble Mobile Manager. Also has ProPoint technology. We're gonna talk about that here in, in a second um, with uh, the next slide that I have here. It's still versatile, it's still lightweight, uh, still offers you, offers those catalyst positioning, but is now considered a receiver. So Trimble has built in a receiver into this catalyst positioning. So it's a little bit heavier than the than the the DA one, uh, but not by much. Um, it it does it does feel like there there are some some bones inside of the the DA two antenna now. Um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, the ProPoint technology side of things. This is the same technology that the R12 has built into uh, it as well. So it's going to help you to improve your, uh, your technology in uh, challenging environments, uh, under tree canopy and urban structures and urban scenarios. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about this in experiences and I've had experiences with this firsthand in, in an urban, can, urban environment uh, near buildings and under tree canopy. So we've kind of tested this through the gamut, but this is what ProPoint technology allows you to do. It allows the, the catalyst to, um, to dial down to its accuracy a lot faster than say uh, an R1 or an R2 will um, as it's going to converge with every single satellite uh, constellation that we have available uh, available to us. The next slide is they, uh, Trimble has rebranded the Catalyst subscriptions uh, from previously you were at one meter, submeter, decimeter, and precision. And Trimble has then gone and changed the pricing, or not changed the pricing, but changed the naming of of the pricing. There was a 5% uh, price increase, so there is a change on the pricing of it as well. Um, but the naming is now Catalyst 60, Catalyst 30, Catalyst 10, and Catalyst 1 um, on, on there. And uh, Jay go, went ahead and put out there for everybody the, the Catalyst DA2 website in case you guys want to take a look at it. Um, as well. So uh, the Catalyst 60 is going to be around 60 centimeters or about 30 inches, 28 to 30 inches with that. And then uh, the Catalyst 30 is right around uh, 12 inches. And then obviously Catalyst 10 is four inches and then Catalyst 1 is one centimeter uh, level of accuracy. So if you are an existing Catalyst customer, you already have access to these, uh, to these subscriptions, and you might have noticed the change um, in the naming convention for, the, for these subscriptions here. Moving forward, um, the biggest question is, 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 is what about corrections? 
uh, we operate in, in, in different states. So I'm here in Missouri. I have access to a VRS, uh, a VRS network that is put up by MoDOT. Uh, Jay has one in Wisconsin. Andy has one in Michigan as well. So there is the, the, the guessing of what software or what solution do we need when we travel to these multiple states, if you are traveling to different states to, to do data collection. Um, when you go with Catalyst and you have the ability to have that subscription, it takes care of the guesswork of needing to, uh, to, to select a correction source or a VRS or RTN uh, network when you are in, in, in that state. So these subscriptions are going to come with an RTX subscription and a VRS Now subscription. Uh, so all levels will have will have the the ability to use RTX or VRS Now depending on what location you are in. Um, so you no longer need the, the the guesswork of of trying to figure out what state what correction source that state has when you're when you're when you're collecting data. So, like I said, the Catalyst subscription simply includes corrections and it just works. So in the Trimble corrections, in Trimble Mobile Manager, uh, there is a Trimble corrections hub. And based upon your location, it's going to either select RTX or VRS now um, to, to get your corrections and get your accuracy in, in, in whichever state that you're, that, that you're in. Now, with RTX, it's not going to require you to have internet access. But if you're in a VRS Now area and you want to use VRS Now, it is going to uh, require you to um, to see uh, to use internet while you're collecting data. Now, what I'm going to do here, real quick, is I'm going to open up the Trimble positioning uh, services, and I will go ahead and place this in the chat mess the chat window for for uh, for everyone to see here. Give me one second, I'm pasting it in here. So you have uh, access to this resource as well. So this is Trimble Positioning Services and they have interactive maps. I'm gonna come down to survey and mapping and Trimble has created this really cool interactive map. Uh, I'm just gonna zoom in here over our little territory area and you can select center point RTX and this actually includes all of our RTX uh, subscriptions, either field point or viewpoint. And you'll notice that you can travel anywhere in the United States and use RTX and get down to two centimeters of, uh, of accuracy with, with RTX. You also have the ability to select VRS Now. Um, as you know, uh, VRS Now has become a little bit uh, uh, larger in, its, its ter in terms of its territory. Um, so it covers Indiana, Illinois, Iowa, and Nebraska um, in our territories. And then it also encompasses a little bit of the St. Louis area here in Missouri. But you have this ability to go out here and see if you're traveling to a different state to do a project, what you have access to uh, while, you're, while you're collecting data. But the Trimble Catalyst really affords you to take the guesswork out of, out of what you need when you're traveling to those, to those states. All right, let's go back into the PowerPoint here. Um, and now we're going to talk about, about the pricing of, of the receivers. So, uh, the DA2 itself is $375. Um, so when you get that pack out, all it's going to come with itself is, is the, uh, the DA2 receiver and the pole mount to mount the battery, uh, to the pole. You're going to need a battery when you are out there doing your data collection. What you will need to purchase is a battery um, and a pole to mount to mount that 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 device on, because um, as of right now, there's no mounting it directly to to the phone uh, yet. Uh, Trimble is working on that to have a, a, a kind of an all-in-one handheld solution with the catalyst mounted to to your phones. Uh, so that thirty, the 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 battery that came with the DA1 antenna is a 335 milliamp battery. Those are twenty six dollars, um, and then there are your pricing of the the subscriptions per per month. Um, so Catalyst One is three hundred sixty eight dollars, uh, and so on down the line. Now, 
what um, what we have now is you can even go down to to the hourly uh, of, on the precision. So you can get t Catalyst One at an hourly pack, and the cost is ten dollars and five five fifty cents an hour. Um, when you start getting into that um, hundred thousand and ten thousand hourly packs, the the price drastically uh, decreases um, in, in buying those hourly packs. Now, just a heads up, when you buy those hourly packs, um, those hourly packs will only be valid for 12 months. So as soon as you purchase them, you would have to use those hours uh, during, the, during those 12 months. Um, uh, and, and and if you haven't, um, then you will lose then you will lose those hours. So that that thousand and ten thousand hourly packs are going to be for large implementations um, for customers who are going to purchase a lot of DA two receivers and and uh, go out there and, and collect data. So the Catalyst hourly works a little bit differently than the monthly. Um, so the monthly is just going to allow you during the course of that month to start collecting data. As where the hourly, you have to go into Trimble Mobile Manager and launch an hour to use. Um, and you, will, you, you can't pause it. You have to use that complete hour, um, whether you use five minutes or you use 55 minutes of it, uh, you will use that complete hour. And then it will alert you that your hour is starting to end. Would you like to start another hour? Um, and that's how you would use the, the, the one hourly uh, the Catalyst One hourly subscription uh, side of things. And then uh, Jay has put some more, uh, the Trimble community page for the mapping in GIS. Uh, it's a great repository to put that information and, and see what other people are doing out there. Um, are they using the Catalyst DA2? How are they using it? Um, if you have questions, you can put questions out on that, on that community page as well. Uh, so let's talk about a little bit about software. Um, uh, let's talk about the software that, that, that we have here. Now, we're not going to spend a lot of time on, on the software side of it. We want to sit here and, and answer any questions that you guys might have about the DA2 antenna and our experiences as well. Um, so here are the softwares that we've tested with, we've, we've tried with, and, um, and, and it like the, in one of the previous slides, it just works. Um, so you have Terraflex, which is Trimble software, uh, PinMap, uh, which is an Android only software, which is a hybrid survey GIS, uh, GIS software, Trimble Mobile Manager, which is just the um, which is which is the the hub to control. Uh, the Catalyst and its subscriptions, it can share that information to a third-party application. Um, so you could do a science project and get into, into uh, Trimble Mobile Manager and place it to a third-party application and test it out if, if, if you want. Now, there is something to be talked about inside of, inside of Trimble Mobile Manager, and Jay just put this in here. You will have to have a Trimble ID it's associated with this. So it, it, since these are subscriptions, um, it would just be just how Esri handles it, how Trimble handles Terraflex or PinMap. Uh, there is a license manager that holds the uh, the subscription, you then assign that to an email. So for instance, if I was to buy a, buy a software, buy, buy a license of Catalyst One, and I wanted to assign that to Jay, I would assign it to his email, which would then be tr Jay's Trimble ID, and he would have to use his username and password to then log into Trimble Mobile Manager. Now, sometimes that becomes a, becomes a little bit of a, uh, of a tough scenario because you're now dealing with usernames and passwords to get into Trimble to Trimble Mobile Manager. When you log into Trimble Mobile Manager for the first time, it will download a 30-day token. And during that 30-day token, you will no longer have to put in your username and password to, to then uh, collect that, uh, to get into Trimble Mobile Manager. You have the ability, um, after those 30 days, you will have to 
log back in to Trimble Mobile Manager to re-download that 30-day token. So please be aware that you will need internet access after those 30 days to get back into Trimble Mobile Manager to download that 30-day token. Um, especially if you're going into an area where there is no cell service. Um, since everybody's kind of been home and we're getting kind of back to normal-ish, um, it all boils down to cybersecurity and Trimble has taken this very seriously and they want to help keep your information safe. This is why you have a username and password to log into Trimble Mobile Manager. Um, it's protecting your identity and it's protecting your data uh, as well as your subscriptions. Now, the other one, the other software that, that, uh, that we have here is Esri Field Maps. This is the new collector. Um, if the last webinar we did back in February of 2021, uh, we talked about field maps with, with Jeff Shaner. Um, you can go back on our YouTube page and watch that if you're not familiar with it, or you can come and ask us questions about, about new field maps. This is the, the, the application that Esri will be using going forward and replacing uh, Esri, Esri Collector. Uh, so I'm going to, to kind of stop talking here for a second, and we're going we're gonna to talk about our, our experiences with, with the, uh, the DA2 antenna. We've had them for about, uh, about three weeks now. So we've, we've, we've tested with them, we, we, we've seen it, we've seen it firsthand. And um, I want to start off with Jay to, to give in uh, his, his experience with, with the DA2 antenna. So Jay, go ahead and take it away. All right, thanks, Joe. Um, yeah, so if any of you have ever used um, the Trimble R2s or the DA1s or any of the Trimble GNSS receivers, um, the simplicity of using a setup like this with your phone, and especially now that you can use iOS, um, is very versatile, as Joe was talking about earlier. I did some testing both in you know open settings, as you can see in the far left, that's me and my cul-de-sac on top of manhole. That, of course, is the best case GNSS scenario. You know, with RTX, of course, you're getting down to your two centimeters. If I would have flipped over to my Wisconsin DOT VRS, actually, if you check the data sheet, you can actually get a little bit better than what RTX is giving you because now you're using a local control um, RTK, if you will. Um, I did do some testing in a local park behind some of those houses underneath tree canopy, which it looks like in the photos that Andy and Joe have too, and they can discuss more about their um, experiences underneath tree canopy. Uh, you do have to wait just like any other GNSS receiver, but it does do a very good job of performing and dialing down um, to a couple inches. You may have to wait a minute or two, but uh, I have seen better performance at the moment underneath tree canopy in harsh conditions than the R2, like Joe was talking about, the Pro Point uh, engine that is inside of the DA2, which is the same engine that the R12 is using. So that's been my experience so far. Go ahead, Andy. Yeah, so I've had the, the, the privilege of doing a lot of testing with the DA2 as well. And what's really caught my eye and impressed me is how quickly the DA2 is able to acquire satellites um, and obtain a high degree of precision. I've done a lot of testing around the office and under tree cover. Um, I was just over at a landfill last week, um, mapping some control points. And the DA2 has really offered me a reliable precision uh, throughout my testing. Um, and I found it to be a simple, easy to use receiver um, that offers a high degree of flexibility for the user. And throughout my testing, like I said, it's, it's offered me great precision. Um, and it's something that I've relied on uh, for testing new software. If I need to step out of the office for a couple minutes and take a couple points or test some new software, um, it's really given me that flexibility to, to step out and be able to collect points uh, very quickly. Um, and really, I have nothing but good things to say about the DA2. Thanks, thanks, Andy and Jay. Um, so uh, for, giving, for, for giving your experiences on this DA2 antenna. Um, and so now I'm going to talk a little bit about my experience as well. So um, Comparatively speaking, when we talk about the DA1, so um, Andy's kind of the, the, the new guy here where he never had experience with the DA1 antenna. Um, Jay and I have. Um, the DA1 antenna 
uh, although a revolutionary prod product was limited by its Android uh, capabilities, it was limited by a cable that had to attach into a, to a phone. There were only certain phones that could run this uh, this, this solution. Um, now, Jay had a Jay, Jay had received a demo unit. He had sent that down to me, and I was at a conference in 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 Fort Wayne, Indiana, where I brought the Catalyst DA2 antenna for the first time. So Andy got to see my reaction, and also uh, one of our sales reps in Indiana got to see our reaction as well. And my mind was blown by how easy this this device is to use. Um, it is um, it is it is quite significantly a, a game changer because it does fill that solution of an R1. It does fill that solution of an R2 um, without the, the, uh, the capital expenses uh, that an R1 or an R2 will, will, will have. Um, so when we're out there, uh, when I was out there collecting data, that photo that you see was me standing under a canopy with using the Catalyst One uh, solution with field maps and we were down to a centimeter level of accuracy in less than two minutes um, using VRS now, because uh, as we were in uh, in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, so I'm going to to show you some of the data that I collected with uh, with field maps here. And um, I'm just going to change this to streets. And as you can see, I was here in uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, and here is that exact tree that I was standing under. Uh, as well. So I can show you the metadata that, that we captured of this. So um, there's my horizontal accuracy. There's my vertical accuracy using the DA2 antenna. Um, and then also I was able to capture my mean sea level elevation in feet uh, with, with, this, uh, with this as well. So uh, it, it, it's awesome. Uh, it, it connects up just like an R1 or an R2 will. And uh, we were able to collect uh, to collect data, even in harsh environments. Right here, this is a walkway um, between two two really tall buildings, um, capturing a pole, and I was still able to get one centimeter level of accuracy. That's that pro point technology that's allowing us to get better accuracy um, in in the field because we're dealing with a receiver now and not necessarily a an antenna like the DA one and uh, the DA one. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and move off of this and, um, that's, that's all we have for, for, for experiences. Um, so now what we want to do is, is just, just have a little discussion. Um, you can use the Q and a, um, you can use the chat window, uh, Andy, Andy and I, Andy, Jay and I will, will be sitting here and answering questions that you guys uh, might have about the DA2 antenna. Um, I did have one that that came through earlier here um, and someone, uh, Gary had asked, can we order one today? Um, yes, we have these in stock. So we can, uh, we can place, these, place these orders and, and fulfill these, uh, these orders for you um, down, uh, down the road. Um, so who has the first question for us? We can take you off the um, lead too, I believe, right? We can. Um, if so, it's going to get a little. Since people are using chat, it's going to get a little get a little different here. So okay. um, I'm going to look. So so Tyler comes in here and asks and, and is asking a question of what's the difference between TerraFlex and PinMap. Um, this is this is a this is a conversation uh, uh, where TerraFlex is a strictly um, uh, a GIS solution. Um, much like Esri field maps, um, as where pin map is going to have some survey survey impl implementations in there as well. Um, working specifically, Jay, Jay, you could probably answer pin map more than I can, but um, it's going to have like some Kogo features, offsets. Um, Jay, do you have anything else to add about pin map? No, you, you hit the nail on the head. It's a hybrid. Uh, it's 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 a mixture of GIS and um, survey tools. Um, Tyler, if you want to talk offline. Um, I can uh, answer your questions about that in more depth. Yeah, and G Tyler just emailed JRI, and we can we can handle we can handle that. Um, so Chris comes in and asks, "Will the DA two work with the TSC seven handheld?" Um, 
Depends on, uh, they just recently added the DA2 to work with Terraflex. So I'm not entirely too sure if the if that's gonna if that's gonna work in conjunction with the TSC seven, but it's not gonna work with survey with survey software. So it will not work with with Trimble Access. Um, it would have to be Terraflex only. So um, I'm not entirely too sure if it's gonna work. Uh, it, it would have to work with if it's gonna work on the TSC seven. It's going to have to work in conjunction with. Um, with the uh, with Terraflex. Hey Jay, if you can, while, while I'm thinking about it, can you put in the chat window the product configuration guide that, that there is from Trimble? Sure. Uh, one thing to add about that TSC7 is the uh, portrait versus landscape. It just depends on if the application can rotate or not. Right. Right. That is, that's another, that's another one. I think that, I think Terraflex can, can work in, in, yeah, in there. Cause it's, it's just a, a window. It's windows 10. The TSC seven is windows 10. So it should, it potentially might work. The only problem, nope, actually it's not going to work because there is no, um, well, there's no Trimble mobile manager for windows 10. Um, so Kara, uh, Kara asked a question um, about uh, other than a low initial cost um, subscription perks and what gives a product an edge over, over the EOS Arrow uh, product. The EOS is our is a competitor of ours. Um, what this is going to to mm, this is this is tough because it, it's it's really the Catalyst and the EOS products aren't in the same the same vein because you're getting a um, accuracy with with that device at a subscription. And um, I, you, you kind of stumped me there. So, Kara, we can take this offline and 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 have a have a talk after after, after this um, uh, about the the EO side um, uh, with that. Unless Jay or Andy, you have anything to add about about that sure. question? Sure, I'll, I'll chime in. I mean, think of it as just purchasing straight up the R two or the R one up front. You're still looking at the upfront expenditure costs of that arrow up front. The DA two. <laughs> Um, is a nice alternative because it's pay as you go. Um, it, it's your Hulu, it's your Netflix. I may not need it all year. Um, I want it as my second receiver because I've got some projects that may pop up out of the blue and my R2 or my R10 or R12 or R1 are already designated to a specific project. So I guess you got to think of it from that way as far as upfront expenditures versus pay as you go. Thanks, Jay. Appreciate it. Um, so Tim comes in and says, for the hourly subscriptions, is that over the course of an entire year or is that per month? Um, so, 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 so Tim, um, when you purchase an hourly, you're going to have 12 months to use those hours. Uh, when we apply that license, you have 90 days to activate. After those 90 days, it's going to automatically activate. And then you have 12 hours to, or not 12 hours, you have 12 months to fulfill those to fulfill those hours, um, we have not tested with NISC, NISC's MapWise. Um, uh, that's the that's another conversation for 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 another day because it would have to use Trimble Mobile Manager uh, in with uh, with the DA2 antenna. Uh, and if you um, so, if you surpass your hours, you would have to. Um, there is a when you log into Trimble Mobile Manager, it'll say you have a pool of this many hours and you would just have to need to re-up re, re -up your hours. Uh... I'll take uh, the question from Dustin. Um, Dustin, PenMap is a standalone software. So similar to older TerraSync or currently TerraFlex, you would have to manually download that data and then bring that into your Esri solutions. So there is no connector tool uh, for PenMap for ArcGIS Online. Yeah, and if you're already using ArcGIS Online, uh, I would recommend using field maps over over PenMap, unless you needed those survey, unless you needed those those survey tools. Uh, PenMap. Uh, I believe that field maps uh, is is one of the best data collection tools um, if you're in that ArcGIS Online environment as well. Um, 
So there, I'm, I'm, I'm going to our Q&A now, uh, uh, Jay and Andy, so you can see where we're, where we're at. Um, the, so Gary is asking us, can we train quickly? Uh, it just depends on our, depends on, on, on our schedules. Um, if we're, if we're available to train quickly, but, um, our trainings would run depending on the software, uh, we do jumpstart training starting at $900, um, for Terraflex pen map, uh, and field maps. So, uh, we do have the ability to train quickly. It just depends on our availability, uh, to get you up and running. And, the, and those trainings uh, that Joe just mentioned are currently Zoom trainings. Um, if you want to talk offline about in-person trainings, we can talk offline. Yes. Uh, so Jim's going to come. Jim comes in and asks, "Can a, a single DA2 be easily shared in a multi-user environment?" Jim, the answer is, is yes. Um, it gets uh, if you're going to use it in a multi-user environment. My recommendation for you is to have a singular device that is just attached to that. To that catalyst because um, really what you want to do is afford that user to pick it up and just start collecting data. Now, for instance, if Jay, Andy, and I were, uh, were all using the same catalyst, all using the same subscription, um, using three separate devices, it's going to cause a little bit of, little, little bit of confusion. Um, so if you're going to use it in a multi-user environment, I would recommend that you have a iPad, iPhone, Android device that is tied to that, to that catalyst. So that way that user can just pick it up and start, and start collecting data um, with, with, with none of the guesswork. Yeah, um, then you're not, you're not having to remember multiple different passwords or Trimble IDs. Right. Um, so here's one. Our offices use GPS Pathfinder office software and handhelds for limited work. We do documenting samples. If we were to go to the system, can we load files onto the handheld units to navigate to historically sampling location? So, uh, this is a good question. Um, with, with the moving to, um, to catalyst, we are moving to a cloud-based environment. So whether you're using um, I'm going to only use Terraflex and um, and field maps as a as a uh, a benchmark here. Uh, that data is already going to be in the map, so we don't have to load historical data. You can load historical data into the maps, um, but you don't have to worry about the guesswork of loading that to a handheld to then take out into the field because that map will be will be already uh, available. So we're eliminating that use of needing GPS Pathfinder office, bringing those handhelds into, um, into the office. And the data is all hosted by either an Amazon web service or um, Trimble servers as well uh, and hosting that data. So uh, the users don't have to come back into the office to, 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 for that historical data for you to load them onto your handhelds. Um, okay, so SSF files will then work in a cloud-based system. So, um, so yeah, the, 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 the filing of, uh, of the SSFs are, are now gone. Um, we're using shapefiles, file geodatabases, um, al along those lines. We're not using the, the regular, um, the regular information with, with, uh, with, TerraSync and, Path, and or Pathfinder Office. Um, is there any other questions or chats that came up, guys, that you can see here? Um, I would just say Todd just requested to see the price page again. Um, so the pricing page, you can go out to... Um, you can go out to uh, the, the page that, that Jay had put out there um, about the products um, as well. Um, there is also a, uh, there's also a webpage that um, we have as well. So if you go to, uh, this necessarily hasn't been updated to, to, the, to the current DA2 antennas, but we are working on it now. Um, you can go to catalyst.silergeo.com and you can go to the Catalyst page, um, and you can you can see the pricing of of the accuracies um, that are here. You can also buy now directly uh, through the website 
uh, as well. Like I said, this has the old monthly subscriptions. We're working on getting this updated. Um, and it also has the old the old DA1 antenna. So um, we have to get that updated as well. But you have the ability to, to, to purchase uh, directly through the website. Um, and and uh, and see the pricing uh, as well. Um, if nobody else has any questions, um, yes, yeah, so Jim, we will notify everybody who won. Uh, we will we'll we'll notify everybody who won the the D, the DA two antenna. Um, so uh, if nobody has any other questions, uh, thank you all for coming. If you if you want to fill out that survey, there's some questions in there about you know potential potential webinars you want to see in the future from us that you might want to see us present on. Um, give us some ideas. You're our audience um, and we want to we want to make sure that that we're, um, we're we're seeing what you guys want want to presenting on what you want to see. So uh, thanks Jay and Andy for for being there to back me up today and uh, we will uh, we will see everybody soon. All right thanks everyone.